Hello guys, I am creating a tutorial on how to install MX Linux on a machine, well a virtual machine, but it should be a pretty similar process either way. You can download MX Linux from this website, the link is in the description below, or you can just go to mxlinux.org and just go to their mirrors page and it should be there. And I've basically got it uh, pre-installed, I mean pre-downloaded. So yeah, let's get started. I'm going to be using a Oracle VirtualBox for this. Basically, what you want to do is you want to take Rufus and basically create a live image on your flash drive. If you don't know how to do that, you can just look it up online. It's pretty simple. This is basically just to walk you guys on how to do the rest of it once you have it up and running on your USB and you boot from the USB you can then uh, use this tutorial to find out what to do from there basically I'm making this video because there was a guy in the comment section who said that, that the tutorial the previous tutorial was uh, what's the word outdated so I'm creating a new one because he didn't really specify what went wrong last time he just said that it wasn't working with the newest version, so let's see. Okay, create a virtual hard disk. Virtual hard disk, dynamically allocated. Select hard drive space to allocate. 20 gigs should be enough. Create. Alright. Settings. Basically, if you're installing MX Linux on an actual machine, not a virtual machine, most of this shouldn't be you won't have to do most of this basically just put on a live USB and then just boot from the live USB I'm gonna tell you where that starts off from but since I don't have a spare laptop at the moment to install it on I'm just gonna be using the the virtual box instead okay graphics controller VBox to allow full screen and storage Go to empty under controller IDE and then find the folder you saved the disk image from from the website MX Linux 19 and set that to that. Network and that should be enough, though you have other options. Bridge adapter should be what is what most people go for, but I'm just gonna stick with NAT. And then you click start. In my last video, I used uh, what's it called? I was using the uh, text-to-speech method. Back then, I didn't have a microphone. This is, this is a new microphone I bought, so just seeing, just testing how this works. So I've been like uh, absent for a few months. I'll be creating a few more Linux tutorials, but I think I'll be going more over to Python tutorials for a while. Since I'm learning how to code and learning how Python works. I'm basically going to be using my YouTube channel as a repository to store some tutorials so I can look back at them for future reference. If, you, if it helps you guys out, you guys are welcome to check it out as well. So it's on YouTube for that reason, so you know, and if anyone needs help, just let me know. If anyone has ideas what videos I should make in the future too, let me know. Because I do want to do a little bit more on YouTube regarding tutorials and references for future projects and ideas. It's just one of the reasons I've been uh, kind of off YouTube for a few months is I just, it's kind of hard to figure out what to do with it, you know. Like I made the channel, but I don't really know what to do with it. Anyway, once you run the live image, should be in a live instance of MX Linux. Again, once you have the live image on the USB connected in, boot from your USB. You have to go to your BIOS, go to your boot order, set your USB boot order as top priority. And then once you boot from there, you should end up. Well, let me just uh, increase the resolution. Let me see if it fits. And 
Let's see if it fits in the virtual box screen. Almost. Alright. Alright. So yeah, once you boot from the live USB, you should be here. It's basically a live instance of MX Linux. You'll get this welcome what's it called? Um message. You can just close that out. First things first, you want to check if your Wi-Fi is working or your internet's working. In this case, I am connected because of the or the fact that this is a virtual box, so it's connected to my actual internet. F for you guys, it'll probably be different. You'll probably have to connect to your Wi-Fi or internet or Ethernet cord. Just go over here and collect connected from there. And then once you're connected, just go over to Firefox real quick just to see if you're if the internet works. It's pretty important because you will have to do updates after this, so it's important that you are connected to the internet. Let's see www.mozilla.org. Uh, um, let's try another website, Walmart, for instance. Yep, we are connected to the internet. So in that case, you want to run the installer up here. Just wait for it to load. In terms of use, should be pretty straightforward. You can read their code of conduct and their terms of use online as well. Over here, you got the rearranged disk partitions. You can choose if you want to install MX Linux on your entire hard drive, or just part, or, ah, or just part of your hard drive. You can run the partition, the partition tool to choose a partition. But since I, since this is on a virtual machine, I already have 20 gigs partitioned off. So instead of creating a smaller partition, I think I'll just stick with this. I'll install using the entire disk. Click next. Normally you would have a few more options, but I guess this but this time it's giving me SDA. SDA is what you want. So just stick with that if it's set to something different. Click next. Okay to format in the entire disk, yes. Okay, at this point I'm gonna cut it off for a bit because it's gonna take a while for it to install. You should re reach about 94%. After that you have to click next. Make sure you install on MBR because that's what I've all master boot record. That's what I've used it on before so far on ah, every Linux ISO every Linux distro I've run, I've run it on master boot record, so just stick with MBR. MBR, yeah. I mean I've never done partition boot record, but I mean if it's on a partition just stick with that. Otherwise MBR should be fine. Anyways, um, I will be right back. All right, so we are back, and at 92 percent or 93 percent this time, it gives you the option to click next again. So that's where you know you have to click move forward. So it's pause for required operator input. Just click next. Here, you have to choose your computer name. I'm just going to leave it as MX. You can choose your computer domain. That's if you're in a network environment. Same for work group. You have the option to cha check it. Ah. To change it here. Next. Choose your uh, location. I'm just going to keep it as default. Okay, default username. But I'm just going to be uh, very basic with this since I'm going to remove this anyway. So I'm just going to go for the most basics. MX password same thing actually I mean by the time this video is up this uh, virtual machine will be removed anyway so it doesn't matter but yeah you can choose your uh, username and password here you can change select auto login if you want again if you're using Linux you probably don't want to use that show password just check the passwords you have and you know write them down somewhere so you don't forget Next, basically tips. Just you can just go to mxlinux.org for more information. Really, just uh, read the manual. Basically, at this point, the installation is going to continue. It's at 97% now. Installing Grub. 98%.
MX Linux is a it's very closely related to Debian, though it has some people over from Antix also working on it. I'm not a fan of Antix, but I mean Debian's alright. Do basically if you want tutorials on how to use MX Linux, if you know how to use Debian, you basically know how to use MX. Like ninety percent of MX is bas basically Debian. Same for installing software and ex and other things, as well as using any updates. Term terminal commands, they're mostly the same. Actually, they're entirely the same. If you know Debian term terminal commands, you can use them on MX Linux as well and should be fine. It's uh, almost there. Cleaning up. Okay, at this point, yeah, just uh, make sure this is check checked off. Automatically reboot the system when the installer is closed. It's going to go through a reboot. Once it closes, once the computer turns off, you want to remove your flash drive and then let it turn back on. Um, if that doesn't work, what you want to do is you want to go into your BIOS again and then make sure that instead of your USB being at the top priority, you want to find your hard drive where you installed MX Linux and set that as your top priority. That should allow you to run MX Linux. If you have a UEFI, like a partition of UEFI there that could sometimes get in the way so you want that as top priority if setting MX Linux as top priority doesn't install it so yeah, it's gonna reboot once I click finish so this is the... I'm just gonna take a sec 